Welcome back to The Breakfast. Our next conversation uh, this morning is going to be talking COVID-19 and, of course, uh, the conversation on vaccinations uh, for Nigerians. Navdak yesterday, um, of course, it revealed that they had received four doses for vaccines that they were going to be looking into um, uh, for possible use here in Nigeria. We've invited this morning DG Navdak, Professor Mojisola Adeyeye. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us, ma'am. Good morning. It's very good to be here. Good Thank you. Joining us. And we also have uh, Dr. Tui Mebawondu um, here in the studio with us. Good morning to you, Dr. Good morning. All right. So we're going to be, we're going to be um, speaking with Dr. Tui in a bit. But let's start with uh, Professor Adia here. Um, I'm going to, you know, start by asking about um, the, the expectations, you know, in the last few months for vaccinations um, have been heightened. Uh, we first of all had talked about 100,000, and then in the news this morning, there's talks about 52 million um, possible vaccines for Nigerians. So um, can you help in any way clarify where we are with uh, vaccines and what we are truly expecting? Uh, thank you very much. Um, it has been a very hectic uh, few months in terms of expectations on vaccines and the regulatory concerns. Uh, for any vaccine to come into Nigeria, uh, it has to pass through NAPDAC. First, because we need to know the history of each vaccine from the first day they started the development to phase three clinical trials and the result. Uh, so we've been expecting uh, doses, doses is a, the dosia, a dosia rather is the Bible of a drug product, meaning it has everything that you should know in terms of the development and the clinical trials. Uh, we've been expecting that, but uh, they were kind of slow in coming. Uh, in terms of vaccines generally, uh, uh, the COVID vaccines rather, COVAX facility, uh, which is made up of uh, uh, WHO, CEPI, uh, uh, Gavi, uh, UNICEF, they make up this uh, conglomerate uh, that decided that 92 countries, low middle income countries, should get some free vaccines. And so we call those vaccines COVAX facility vaccines. Nigeria is one of them. Uh, and uh, COVAX has been making arrangements with the different manufacturers that they've identified as suitable, or they are still identifying as suitable. Uh, to come into their own facility uh, or to be patronized. Uh, so recently, uh, WHO contacted NAVDAC actually last week uh, that we can now have access to the doses of the vaccines that they're going to be uh, distributing uh, worldwide. Uh, but before last week, we've been engaging different companies. Uh, we've been engaging uh, the Russian Gamalea uh, lab laboratory or research uh, front for Russia, uh, they developing they are developing Sputnik V COVID vaccine. So the Russia sent uh, Gamalea sent us the dossier, and we've been reviewing it. Actually, we finished reviewing and then gave them our feedback. We are waiting for that uh, the feedback to be addressed because. Our concern is about quality, safety, and efficacy of any vaccine that we're going to use for our people. So that is one. Uh, we, also we are also engaging uh, another company, Bharat uh, Technology in India. Uh, they sent us their dosier, uh, but the dosier is not yet complete. So until they finish uh, phase three clinical trials, uh, we are still waiting. Uh, for them and we've given them our feedback also and the the latest is uh, from is the astrazeneca vaccine from serum institute of uh, india we are currently looking at that right now we are giving it an expedited review uh, bearing in mind that uh, the vaccines have different the different vaccines have different storage conditions the astrazeneca vaccine uh, has a storage condition that is more conducive for our own uh, climb uh, in the sense that it can be stored in the regular freezer. So we are working on that uh, as we speak, and we will make an announcement once 
we finished our All review. Right. Uh, so that is the third one, but we're expecting also the dose for Pfizer-BioNTech uh, vaccine. That is the, just the dose here. not, you know, uh, we're not expecting something right now from the company directly. Uh, so uh, we are very expectant and uh, within a week or so, we should have uh, at least one uh, dossier approved uh, and very likely AstraZeneca, but until we do, uh, we don't, we cannot say categorically that that is going to happen. Right. Uh, so okay. it has been a very, uh, what will I call it, uh, busy, hectic uh, period for our agency, but that is what NAVDAC does. NAVDAC is all about safeguarding the health of our people. Uh, we're going to put a lot into uh, the entry of vaccine into, Ni into Nigeria. First, because we have to also track and trace to make sure that uh, falsified vaccines, which are all over the place now, uh, not in Nigeria, but generally I'm talking globally, that we make sure that those falsified vaccines don't get into the supply chain. All right. Then so we're going to do pharmacovigilance to okay. ensure that we monitor each person that receives the vaccine. Uh, to monitor adverse events following immunizations, things like that. Okay, thank you, Professor. What we what we know now is just the doses we've received for four vaccines: two from India, one from China, and one from Russia. But Nigerians are really interested in when they're going to get the vaccines. Other African countries have received theirs. Other African countries have, you know, begun vaccination. So when can you give us a time frame? Time frame, a timeline. Or when someone like you know the man on the street can get vaccinated against COVID-19. Okay, the National Primary Health is uh, responsible to make statements. However, we've been dialoguing. Uh, we speak almost every other day, myself and the uh, executive uh, director for primary health. Uh, what COVAX facility uh, stated is that. NAVDAC will be, sorry, Nigeria will be receiving the first batch by the end of February or March, early, you know, middle, middle March. Uh, so we don't know when it will get in first, uh, the exact date, but the exact date will depend on when we do the approval also, when we give the approval. But in terms of the man on the street, uh, primary health has stated that uh, the healthcare workers will be given first, and then people with uh, with uh, uh, underlying conditions or older people will be given second. So it's going to be in stages. Uh, so the person on the street uh, will may wait longer unless that person is a healthcare worker or. Uh, somebody with underlying conditions. Those are the two categories okay. that will come first. Okay, right. and, and I, I, I asked you specifically because, you know, the, the campaigns and uh, the statement that have been put out basically are, you know, vaccines can only begin to be issued or, you know, be given only when NAVDAC, you know, approves them. And, you know, since, you know, that's your department. So we're asking how soon can we expect an approval then of these vaccines? The approval would the first approval would take place within the next one week. Okay. That's all I can say. Okay, yes. so okay. I'd like to ask you about storage. It's it's been a major concern. We saw, you know, with information uh, a few weeks ago talking about how you know Nigeria has been disqualified from getting vaccines because we don't have the storage capacity. But we saw, you know, somebody in the federal ministry going around to show, you know, the, the storage facility that we have in Abuja. But in different states of the country, what plans has the government put in place to make sure that when these vaccines come here, they don't go to waste, they are stored appropriately and that everybody can receive them when they're most effective. Again, that is the responsibility of primary health. But what I know uh, from our meetings and discussions is that Nigeria has the facility for the regular freezer that we have, the, the freezer that comes with a fridge or the deep freezer that we all you know, are used to. So we don't have problem with that. And that is why the AstraZeneca vaccine which can be stored in a regular freezer that you and i are familiar with uh is the best shot for now for nigeria not it, it's not like we don't have the minus 70 we do have the minus 70 
in Abuja, uh, but uh, uh, at least for now, our focus is uh, on the AstraZeneca, which we are reviewing as we speak. All right. Um, Professor Mojisola Ade, your DG, Navda, thank you so much for your time. Um, you. Then, of course, for sharing the information thank that you, you have uh, with thank us. You. Uh, we hopefully we would, of course, um, yeah. be able to speak with you again next week. You said it's going to get approved in about a week's time. So hopefully sometime next week, we can also speak with you uh, to get a follow-up on where we are. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Uh, Dr. Tui uh, Mabondo, thanks for joining us once again. So now let's move to you. We're, 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 I'm going to start with asking, you know, she mentioned some of the things that were necessary in order for us to decide which vaccine in particular uh, would be best for us. AstraZeneca seems to be winning the race uh, so far. But can, can you also help, you know, expand on that? Um, what are the things that we need to look at to determine which of these vaccines? Of course, I'm sure that the pricing also would be, would be important um, here. Uh, but what, what specific details should determine which vaccine we should use? Uh, um, thank you. Uh, first and foremost, I can now um, sort of agree that Nigeria is actually focusing on providing vaccines for its people. Because the first step, all those noises you are hearing, uh, we've paid for these millions, we've paid for that, those are just noises. Let's be frank. The starting point is, first of all, you have to define the vaccines you want, why you want that vaccines, submit the uh, dossier for verification by your regulatory agencies. That is the first step before you move to production. As it is, you look at, you look at what, what is happening. First and foremost, we don't have access to Pfizer Biotech. It's, it's challenging because number one, it's only WHO and the, and, the, and, the, and the COVAX group that were able to arrange about 100,000 doses for us. Even that one is having a lot of challenges because America, Europe, they had actually purchased those things ahead of time, even at the point of development and production. So let, let's take that out. So we're left with the Russia on Sputnik 5. We're left with the Serum Institute's own. Because you have to really understand this thing. AstraZeneca was producing the vaccine in Oxford and said that, listen, wait, we're not going to think about Africa. We're seeding the production of one that concerns Africa to India. And that's why they say Adnan uh, Punawala, the man that owned uh, Serum Institute of India, said, that, okay, wait a minute, I'm going to be part of you. The guy, even as late back as March last year, the guy was already, you know, trying to build the factory to produce those vaccines. They thought it was crazy. But now, everybody's trying to rush. So the other one is Barat, uh, Barat, uh, Barat, and then the other one is the Sinopharm. Now, let's face it. More than 70% of vaccine production that we use now, that has been given now, came from three, two, three major uh, AstraZeneca, uh, Moderna, Pfizer. And, and Pfizer. Those are the three. So we're just seeing that 2%, 1%, 5% from the other one we're trying to procure. But again, maybe it fits our own description. Because number one, um, Storage is important. Now, we're, we're going to have a, a quite a challenge. Look at South Africa started vaccination. They had to stop with AstraZeneca because of the mutant strains. To what extent can we, can our own vaccine we're embracing deal with the mutant strain? These are critical issues we need to find out and discuss. Hmm. Because if we don't deal with those mutant strains, it will just be like we have vaccines we're not using. South Africa started rolling out the vaccines. We're just having, have, you know, they have to stop. And we okay. currently are dealing with uh, some variants here in Nigeria. I think sure. it was sometime last week. Yes, uh, yes. About 13 cases yeah. recorded. Yes, yes. You know, so we're seeing the variants already in Nigeria. So which of the vaccines will be good for this variant? Hmm. Okay, that's question number one. Now, uh, secondly, you see, we've seen a lot of what I call vaccine diplomacy and vaccine nationalism. Vaccine, vaccine is now being used to push for agenda of some countries. Yeah, it's a silent war going on. Uh, Europe want to have influence, America want to have influence, China want to have influence, Russia want to have influence. So that would be a definitive thing to decide what we're going to do. We've seen the Southern fashion be, be, be deployed immensely in UAE. Okay, I mean, they bought, because now it's not just a country buying one vaccine. It has to be a combo of the vaccines. Do you have a bit of Russia, a bit of China, a bit of this? So that, again, if you're faced with challenges of, uh, of um, mutant strain, you can deal with it. Then okay. the second key obstacle to us is our health infrastructure. I, I, you know, I, we all know where we are as far as health infrastructure, not just storage. Even taking the vaccines to the remote villages, taking it to the people that need it most, uh, ensuring that you know, cost and human resources for health is not a challenge. And the last thing is vaccine hesitancy. Quite a lot of people don't want to take the vaccine. 
we're not dealing with those data because what is the point of me bringing vaccine and the member of this sect or big church or big mosque or big sector that we're not taking your vaccine? As long as we have people like that that are not going to take the vaccine, the danger, the pandemic or the epidemic is still very real in that country. So we're not doing what I would call vaccine readiness assessment to look at it that what is the rate of hesitancy, how, what are the factors driving this hesitancy, how do we deal with it? These are core issues, not just, yes, it's nice that we've started by saying that we will mean we submit our dossier for approval, but we still have a long way to go on right. moving vaccines so to vaccination. There, there, there are other angles to this conversation, like she even mentioned their fake COVID-19 vaccination. I know someone personally who said he has taken a COVID-19 vaccine. And this is something that has not been approved by NAFTA. Like he said a sister or a friend sent it from, you know, some other parts of the world and he's taken it. Maybe I need to check up on him to see if there are any side effects or anything like that. But how do you feel that this, this present situation where we don't have a nationally approved vaccine is pushing people to, you know, take the bait of these fake vaccines? Well, it's going to happen like that because, again, when you allow vacuum, vacuum can be in terms of information, communication, and even reassuring people in terms of what should, what should happen or what should be done. And when you have a lot of people telling you that, wait a minute, um, we have one million vaccines today, we have six million, we've paid for 10 million. And because we all know that, you see, the production is an issue, even from the countries. You know, because let's face it, the, the country that has the biggest rate of vaccination is Israel, 71%. UAE, close to that, and that's 71%. Even US, 16%. The best country that had vaccination in Africa is 0.00007%, Algeria. You get? So, if we are communicating appropriately, I said that, listen, we don't have vaccine in Nigeria. The vaccine cannot be used by anybody, cannot be sent to anybody because the storage is so critical. Nobody can maintain that cold chain that will make the vaccine, you know, very active. And if you take vaccine that is not active, you're going to suffer more of side effects. If we are communicating that appropriately at the appropriate time, we'll see that a lot of people will restrict from taking vaccines as if it is a, a So we did a lot of orientation uh, then. Yeah, so again, we need a lot of that information and, and education of people on the street of other people that will understand clearly the danger of taking vaccines that is not coming from Nigeria government, coming from... Uh, and National Private Health Development Agency of coming from NAVDA. We, we would also, you know, hopefully get to a place where we have to decide if the vaccines are going to be free or not, you know, because that would also determine if people would want to go take a cheaper vaccine or be able to take the vaccine at their local pharmacy, you know, local chemist, you know, at the corner of their streets there. Um, that now, of course, gives rise to more people to make fake vaccines um, here in Nigeria. Um, but we're almost out of time. But I, I want to ask about the conversation between vaccination versus medication. Do you think that the world will get to a place where we're no longer vaccinating, but we now have actual treatment for COVID-19? For, 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 for an environment like ours, we honestly look at that medication issue. For me, I was pushing that for us to look at one, uh, prevention, prevention protocol, how to deepen it, and secondly, push more research into medication that can actually limit the critical or side effect yes. or you know or severe diseases of covid those sound will work for us very well now let's look at it for the whole of this year um whether you're talking uh, talking about pfizer whether you're talking of uh, moderna whether you're talking of uh, AstraZeneca. astrazeneca the vaccine has been taken off you cannot get africa cannot move into vaccination until late probably we may be the start late this year and then we're going to see serious vaccination maybe by ending of 2022 or beginning of 2023. So that is the reality. Let us face that as a matter of fact. So while we're waiting for that, what we need to do is to look at deepening the prevention protocol and then looking at it that, do we have medication that can work? Let's focus on those kind of research. Because some country will just wake up and say, listen, I'm not probably going to do this vaccination because I have younger population. I'm not seeing this terrible effect that is seen in US and, and America and Brazil. Brazil. And then look at India has to vaccinate one point how many million people? Billion. More than one billion people that they have to vaccinate. It's the same thing with China. Okay, now where would they have the vaccine to come and throw around in Africa? Let's be realistic about the situation. So, because for, for us to get to that level of herd immunity with vaccination, we need to vaccinate about close to 70 million, 80 million people in Nigeria, if not 100 million. And then that means that you need times two. If you're going to use double doses, you need times two. If you're dealing with mutant strain, it's another issue. 
And then we don't, we've not really, you know, harvest, you know, uh, we house the data collection mechanisms that will let us see side effects. You know, so it's, it's more complex. So for, for me, like Riley pointed out, deepen your prevention protocol, look for medication that can prevent the severe cases of the... Yeah, instead of spending cases. 10 billion on, on developing a vaccine here in Nigeria, we, we probably should invest it's, more. It's not, it's, there's nothing wrong in us doing mean, it, yeah. because wait, I've, while growing up and in school, <laughs> we were better than Indians. Let's honestly, we were better than Indians. But India moved, and now they have two major vaccine, uh, vaccine institutes of, uh, Serum Institute of India and Bharat. Two big ones. So we should focus on what, local what production. What is wrong? We look at the other guys at um, one genome institute in Nigeria, somewhere in Edel or something like that. They initially said they developed a vaccine that was a, as much as 90% effective. The Johnson and Johnson, as as the Nikad, this is about 60 something percent. Why don't we support, find a way to support them and then be able to own, you know, some vaccination process or vaccine and then be able to use that to even leverage our own influence in West Africa sub region? Indeed. You know, the, the, the new diplomacy, the new diplomacy is not about how much armament and how much gun you have. It's your science knowledge. It's for you to be able to take hold of critical institutions Research. like uh, the Okojiwela is taking over now, right. like how well you develop your vaccine, like how well your science can function and launch people in space and change uh, the, direct, the direct narratives about so many things. That's the new diplomacy. All right. Dr. Tui Mabondu, thank you so much. Thank um, you. And I hope that we actually can get from vaccination to medication uh, because like you've said, that, that would be um, a lot you know, better for us um, as a country. Um, Thanks to also to Professor um, Mujisola Adeye for speaking with us this morning. We will take a short break. When we come back, we're moving the conversation here to here in Lagos. The Occupy Leki toll gate. Governor um, Songwulu has ordered a demand, uh, or rather the probe of officers who assaulted protesters on Saturday. That comes up next here on The Breakfast. <laughs>